Now, why did you become a recording artist? See, um, really, I became a recording artist uh, because I just love music. Uh, that's what I wanted to do when I was little. I wanted to make music. I wanted to rap. I wanted to be like, you know what I'm saying, the people, the artists that I looked up to, and it was a means of expressing myself and just showing people what I'm all about, really. So, um, yeah, and I just, you know, I love listening to music. I feel like I can do the same thing. I feel like I could do it, if not better than a lot of the artists who was doing it at the time. So, yeah, that's, that's how I felt about it. So I just tried it out, and it worked. And people was, you know what I'm saying, they was gravitating to it, so I stuck with it. What was the first genre of music you encountered? Uh, I'd probably say, um, Either really between it's either between hip hop and R and B really, hip hop and R and B. And how'd you get into either genre of music? There, do you remember? Uh, the people, my family, this like coming up, listening. You know what I'm saying? Coming up, out my daddy. You know what I'm saying? He had me listening to Master P, like uh, with uh. Troy, you know what I'm saying? All the, all, the sudden, all the Southern artists who was hot at the time, like 97, 98, uh, you know what I'm saying? No Limit Cash Money. Um, the artists who was coming up around my city, you know, the people I was, my, my circle I was hanging around influenced me, you know what I'm saying? We were listening to Wayne, we were listening to Lil Wayne, uh, like I say Lil, Lil Wayne, uh, I was listening to T-Pain, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I say I'm not exactly like just a hip hop artist. I, I kind of move over into like the R&B side of everything. And then, you know what I'm saying, as I got older, I started looking back at the older artists like Snoop Dogg and all of them, like Bone Thugs, uh, Easy e all of them. So really, it's just like, I, I really, I, I'm really just a sponge to whatever I listen to and whatever I like really, so yeah. And for time reference, it's February 2021 as of this interview. Now, you've mentioned several different artists here. Is it safe to say any of these artists you mentioned were also your musical influence as well? For sure, all of them. All of them still. All of them. Now, can you... Well, let me ask you this. Have you personally had a chance to meet any of these artists you named so far? Mm, no, nah, uh, I ain't met, no. Nah. No, nah, really? Mm -mm. I ain't interacting with none of them. I ain't, they, they don't even know I, I exist right now, so, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> now, how did you learn how to rap or sing? Um, what was that learning process like? Rapping? Really, I ain't even know I could really rap until, like, like, the way I see it, like, I started hanging around some dudes who was doing that in middle school, you know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying? Like, they came to be like my brothers, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, they, they, they still is my brothers, but, you know what I'm saying? They was rapping, and I seen them doing it, you know what I'm saying? I started hanging around them, so then it became a thing where, you know what I'm saying? They like, you know what I'm saying? Like, can you rap? You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? What can you do? So I tried, I tried doing it, because, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't no hooper or nothing like that, but they was hooping. But, you know, I was kind of like the artistic person, you know what I'm saying? They find out I could rap. And I just stuck with it, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I came up on the rapping thing. But uh, singing, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that was just something, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, when they hear a song, you know what I'm saying? They just be, they hear a melody, they like, they just, you know what I'm saying? They try to repeat it and everything, and I tried it. Then I tried to do it on the song, and you know what I'm saying? People were feeling it, so I just kept on doing it. So that's how the singing thing came about. Did you ever take music classes? Did you ever have a vocal coach, things of that na nature. Nah, I never took, nah, I, not, I ain't never took a music class to sing, but uh, I can say like, you know what I'm saying, you, music classes you take in school, you know what I'm saying, they teach you uh, like, you know what I'm saying, beat, how beats go, you know what I'm saying, four counts and all that. That's the only kind of coaching I have as far as that. Everything else being self-taught. Now, at this point, are you a full-time recording artist? Full-time, um, I say, um, I say, 
I'm I say probably half time recording artists, kind of half time because uh, cause um I mean when I'm not recording, I'm trying to trying to come up on money. So, and I feel like the point where I'm at now, it's not like where I used to be younger where. I could just focus all the way on rapping out where I could just be like a full time rapper in the studio. I feel like now I, I gotta, gotta, you know what I'm saying, find means to support what I'm chasing. So, like I say, half time, half time artist, half time hustler, whatever you wanna call it. And how long would you say you've been a half time artist for? Rough estimate. Uh, half time, oh, I say since. Really since I graduated high school, really since I graduated high school, cause um, at that point, I wasn't really, like I was periodically staying in and out of my parents, in and out of my parents' roof, but uh, it wasn't like everything for me was paid for. I couldn't just be like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna record today. I ain't gonna worry about how I'm gonna eat because, you know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna, somebody gonna provide that for me. Somebody gonna pay my phone bill and all that for me, so nah, I ain't like that no more. So most of that fall on me, so I gotta, you know what I'm saying, handle my responsibilities as an adult, really. What year did you graduate? Uh, 2015. And what high school was this? Um, I graduated from, uh, I graduated from Terry High School. That's, uh, that's in Mississippi, Terry, Mississippi. Um, I went to Murrah High School before that. And if you're from Jackson, if you're from Jackson, Mississippi, y'all know what, what Murray High School is, you know what I'm saying, what that's about. So what grades do you actually do in each high school? Uh, Murray High School, I, Murray High School, I did ninth through, uh, ninth through 11th grade. Then Terry, I transferred my 11th grade year to Terry and I, and I finished out my last two years there. And why the transfer? Um, I guess cause um, I mean you know my mama, uh, not my mom, but my uh, my parents. I guess they kind of wanted better for me, really. I guess and they and you know what I'm saying from 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 how they felt, they probably wanted better for me because uh, when I was in Merle, you know what I'm saying during that little period, I was the, it was looking kind of rocky, really. It, it wasn't looking out. Uh, it was straight. It was straight, but it went. I guess they felt like they saw a little bit better. And it's like education wise and, and, and living wise too. So, yeah, they, you know what I'm saying? They, they were looking out for me. So, you know what I'm saying? They, I ended up transferring to another uh, district. Basically. And when you referenced music classes in this conversation so far, where they talked about uh, beat counting and things of that nature, was that a high school class or was that middle school or elementary? It was, uh, that was like elementary, uh, middle school, really. And care to share the names of uh, the elementary and the middle school you attended? Um, elementary, for me, Lester Elementary. Then I transferred to Casey Elementary. So that's like South Side and North Side. Uh, middle school, all three grades. That's uh, Northwest Jackson. And um, then after that, it was Murray Terry High School. Do you know the reason why the elementary transfer? Um, this relocation, um, this relocation, like really kind of the same situation uh, for uh, high school. Really, my mama, like we were staying in South Jackson, you know, uh, my mama, um, you know, she just saw a better situation at the um, at at the other elementary school, and it was better for me because they really kind of uh, they really kind of honed in on my on my artistic. On my, you know, on my creativity, really, when I was in elementary, so she transferred me there, and we, um, yeah, she got me up out of there and put me somewhere better. And were all five schools public schools? Um, yep, yeah, all five. Yep, yep, for sure. Ever signed a recording contract? No, sir. No, sir. I don't think I. I probably would if I had if I had the opportunity. I probably would. But I feel like with so much, I feel I'm glad that I was able to kind of learn how I go. But I feel like um, I feel like I probably I probably would, but then I wouldn't though. It's, it just depends on what kind of situation on the table. Ever been offered? No sir, no sir, <laughs> no sir. Not yet. 
Not yet. For so. <laughs> For so. For so. Now refresh my memory one more time. Well, I think I got it. You said it's 2021. For so. And you said you graduated in 20 in 2015, mm. and that's when you started becoming halftime with music. So that's roughly, let's say, five to six years. For so. Rough. In that amount of time, the five or six year period, ever felt like quitting? Yeah, plenty of times. Plenty of times. Plenty of times. I do a, a lot of times I feel like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a waste. I ain't gonna say it was a waste of time, but I feel like, man, it's better stuff I could be doing than to be just, you know what I'm saying? Just recording, recording and just trying to chase this when I need to be doing this and I need to be taking care of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't just keep on pushing it, pushing it aside just to be chasing some dream. You know what I'm saying? So it was plenty of times where I felt like that. It was plenty of times where I almost, where I almost, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, I felt like, I don't know, man. It was just doubts in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it come, it, it come and it goes, you know what I'm saying? But you just got to keep going, really. So that's what I had to do. It was plenty of times I felt like quitting, but I just kept on going. So that's why I'm, and I'm where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Why'd you keep going? Because I feel like, I feel like people, if I quit, if I quit, I look like a fool if I quit, for real. Like, people would be like, boy, you've been, you been chasing it all these years, and, and just for you to quit now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want, to, I don't want people to come to me and be like, hey, man, you still rapping? You know, like, and I'm like, nah, I don't need to do it no more, man. I stopped. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to look, it's going to look some type of way, so. And then I ain't even just keeping, I ain't just, I'm not just continuing because I don't want to look that way. I'm continuing because, like, for me, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, bro, I've been doing it this long. I might as well keep on going because the, the promised land will be right there. Now, was it just a thought or a feeling, or did you ever actually take a break or stop at some point? Mm, I can say I ain't never really just stopped. It was always a feeling. I never stopped though, but um, but like I could say that maybe my act activity and the content that I was putting out in the amount of time I was I was working on it, it kind of declined. Like really, I was going hard when I was in high school. I was going. I was I was really I was really doing in high school. I was like, I was putting in work high school. When I graduated and kind of went to college, uh, when I started going to uh, Mississippi State University, uh. That's when I that's when I really started slowing down and I started taking my foot out the gas really, and um, then when I when that didn't work out and I and I I tried to get back I tried to start back doing it like how I used to, it just wasn't the same no more. It just wasn't the same. I guess I took my foot out the gas and I lost momentum and I had to just keep on going and try to build that up and just build a new work ethic and just adjust really try try new stuff. That's how you know what I'm saying. That's how. It's, I started experimenting with the new styles and everything, sampling my own beats, really, and just trying to just trying new stuff to get back into the groove of recording and coming out with new content, like talking about. So yeah, I just had to keep on going, basically. What happened with college? Uh, college, man, same thing happened to everybody else. You you go to college thinking that you can just float and um, not study for tests, think you could turn up every day, smoke, get drunk. And um, you know what I'm saying, just do what you want to do, treat it like high school, really. And then, you know what I'm saying, yeah, I didn't really get the gist that, you know what I'm saying, I couldn't do all I had to really study and go, you know what I'm saying, to the library. I ain't understand it till like really, I say um, December when my first semester was almost up. So uh, yeah, they came around and I ain't have no money to, you know what I'm saying, just come back really in my, you know what I'm saying, I went performing as good as I should have. So like, you know what I'm saying, my my mama told me we ain't finna we not finna do we not finna put no more money into this if you finna be, you know what I'm saying, if you finna be playing. So it was the end of that. I it was the end of that. I, I still gotta pay it out today. So yeah, that's how college went. So your your mom stops paying because she uh, doesn't see you taking it serious or do you tell her you can stop the payment. I'm not taking it serious. Uh, really a mixture. Really kind of, 
if you ask me, I say a, probably a mixture of both, really, cause um, because yeah, she told me, you know, what I'm saying I'm not finna pay, I'm not finna put thousands in this if you not taking it serious. So what you gonna do? You gonna you gonna buckle down and really do this, or you know, what I'm saying, or how you gonna do this? Like, but you know, what I'm saying I knew, I knew, I already knew college from the start wasn't really, you know, what I'm saying what what I really wanted to do, I felt like I was already, you know what I'm saying, I was already on my way in college. For me, you know what I'm saying, probably just kind of like threw me off what I wanted to do a little bit, but, so I just told, I said, nah, you, ain't, you know what I'm saying, like, you ain't got to keep on putting your money towards it, because I know what I want to do, you know what I'm saying, so, like, I ain't even going, I'll find, I'll, I'll, I'll find another way, you know what I'm saying. So is it safe to say you were a college dropout? Unfortunately, yeah. You quit college? Yeah. I'm gonna go back though. I'm gonna go back for sure. Once I get my funds right and everything situated, everything lined up, I do want to go back just so my mama, you know, what? Well, just so, just so I can, just so I can, you know, show my parents like, yeah, like I ain't give up on this. I know, like this is what this is what you wanted me to do from the start, and here it is. You know what I'm saying? Anyone, when it came to thoughts, feelings of quitting, anyone ever tell you to follow through with it? Anyone ever say, you know what? Maybe this stuff isn't for you. You should quit. Mm, talking about quitting, like, as music. Far as music. Ooh, uh, nah, nobody ever really did that because everybody knew I had it. Everybody, like, I ain't trying to sound cocky, no, but ain't nobody ever really just been like, stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Biggest risk? Uh, some of the, probably, I'd say some of the investments I put towards it because, yeah, I put a, I'd say I put a, that's probably the biggest risk because some, some investments I put it behind it fell, they, they turned into nothing. And then other ones, you know what I'm saying, they, it, other ones, they really helped it out. But yeah, I'd probably say like some of the investments I took uh, those were the biggest risks, really. The only risk, really, to to be honest. Care to share what type of investments these were, or how much you actually invested? Mm. So far. Um. Um. I say like probably. Um. I guess with some folks. Um. With some, I guess. Cause it's really complicated, really. It's just um okay, um it's just some of everything, man. It's 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 small stuff and it's really yeah, all of it's really just small stuff and and it just added up to be something big to where when I look back at it now I'm like I could have kept that little money. I could have I could have kept that and put it here and put it into something that I knew was gonna materialize into something. Looking back at the decision making so far, with that risk, was it worth it? Mm, yeah, I say it's worth it. Uh, I say it's worth it because in the end, it taught me what I need to do, and you know what I'm saying, what not to do because it, I feel like really I, I ain't got no manager or nothing, you know what I'm saying, backing me on this on this type of stuff. So it's really just me learning how all of this stuff go and which routes to take. And then when I actually get to that level, I'm going to already know myself, like, nah, I ain't going to do that because I know that's not going to work. So, yeah. Why no manager? Mm. Oh, well, you know what? I Okay, all right, let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. I don't have a manager who is in the industry who don't who has their foot in the door, probably dealt with bigger artists. But, like, I have, I have like, I have, like, managers, you know what I'm saying, people close to me who, who um, you know what I'm saying, do, like, I guess like the basics of a manager basically, like set, no, no, setting up stuff for me, but like as far as like somebody who's been in the industry who really knows the ins and outs, nah, I don't have that. And is that because you just haven't been presented with an opportunity? Uh, I've been presented with the opportunity before, but um, I say then, then I wasn't in the mindset that I'm in, that I'm in now. 
Uh, I was a little younger then, and this person, they um, they had the connections to actually get me somewhere, and they were actually uh, willing to put me there. They saw the potential, but back then, um, I really, I wasn't just my work ethic wasn't where it needed to be, so um, so that really just fell through, and yeah, that was that was the last time I've been in that kind of situation where I had a manager behind me. Any way you could rekindle that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, one call, one call. But uh, but I don't know. It's just it's really just me because I'm. I feel like I'm just I'm just the type of person who don't like going backwards. I don't like going back. Why? I just feel like. I just feel like if I'm going back, I'm I'm going backwards. Like, like just just turning around, trying to rekindle stuff. Like nah. Nah, like. It, everything that's meant for me, as long as I keep on working, it's gonna come to me. Is it a pride issue? Yeah, <laughs> yup, yup, for sure. For sure, yeah, for sure, that's what it is. But like, it is, but at the same time, I still feel like if I keep putting in work, it's gonna come and find me. Proudest accomplishment so far in your music career? Uh, proudest accomplishment. Um, I got a couple of kind of accomplishments. Most of them was from when I like I first started. Um, but what's your proudest? My proudest, really, really just the impact. Really just the impact. Um, when I hear what people, when I hear people who listen to it, and how it really just impact, and how they say it impact. You know what I'm saying? Like how they feel in their life, like how they just listening to it and them, them just giving me their feedback being like oh man you inspired me to do this you know what i'm saying like bro this song right here like you you the reason why like all of it like this this really this really like like the biggest the biggest reward i done ever got from it like all of like all them blog features and stuff i used to get all the other stuff like views all all of that really ain't nothing to me. It's really like the impact from real people who telling me like they, you know what I'm saying, they rock with. Sounds fulfilling. But so. On the opposite end of the spectrum though, what's been your biggest failure so far in your music career? Biggest failure? Biggest flop, biggest disappointment? Mm, uh, hmm. I went on. Uh, I couldn't really say it's a it's a flop that I could I couldn't really say it's a flop. Um I I can say that like to me in my in my in my mind my biggest failure is just taking my foot off the gas. Taking my foot off the gas when I when I built up so much momentum to actually to actually do some do something for real, I take my foot off the gas. Like that's my that's my biggest failure in my head, taking my foot out the gas, not going not going hard every day, like not go like not just not just going in for like a year, you know what I'm saying? Like that's my yeah. Looking back, would you have done anything different? Mm, uh yeah, for sure. Looking back, uh I'd probably say uh I would have collaborated. I would have made sure I collaborated with a lot of more artists. Like from my city, for one, um, like one of the biggest artists from my city, really to just even break that threshold was uh, was uh, Lil Lonnie, and I wish like I wish like why he was here, you know what I'm saying? I really, I really had it. I that's what I should have put my money into, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I was actually listening to him, and like damn, like I really should have put that money into that collaborating with him and more more artists from my city, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to do now. I I should have been doing that back in the day opposed to um how how I was rocking, you know what I'm saying? Just just rocking with everybody in my circle, you know what I'm saying? Ever had a chance to meet Lonnie? Yeah, I met him um uh, I met him I met him I think on two, three, two, three different events. Because um, I used to shoot videos too. I used to shoot videos and uh and, and do photography and all that too. So um, I had, so um, I think I shot, I shot like a little promo. Um, I shot like a little promo video video for him one time at the club. Then I had, uh, then I ran into him at the studio too, cause it was this dude that I was um, 
Snap Info, he did a song with Lonnie, and uh, I had snapped him up one time up in there. And um, it was something else. It was something else. It was an, it was another. It was something else where I, um, where I seen him where I seen him again. But no, we weren't really just like we weren't like you know what I'm saying like this. So but uh, but yeah, I was rocking with bro music though, and I ran to him a couple of times. What do you mean promo video? Like he uh, instructed you to do this? He paid you for this gig, or was this mm. something you take upon yourself to do? Or it's a promo video for the venue or someone else, and it just so happened to capture him. I think it was like, it really like a promo video for, uh, it was like, it's, it was it was, it was some freelance work, but um, I think Young Dolph was, came to Jackson, he was performing at one of the clubs, and, um, and I was, uh, somebody, a dude I was on, a dude I was cool with, he got me up in there, he was like, man, you know what I'm saying, we, I, can, I can get you up in there, you can shoot Dolph. And um, I had took it and I did it. And Lil Lonnie, he was he was performing there that night, so um, so I got him too. So I shot him too. Um, he was performing on stage, and I got got him. Uh, yeah, that's how this situation went. Really, it wasn't no, it wasn't like no paid type of thing or nothing like that. It was really just I was doing this for for this artist, and but you, you know what I'm saying. But he came perform too, so yeah. Did he see the video? Did he comment on it? Did he? Uh, yeah, he saw the video. Uh, he ain't comment on it, nothing like that though. But uh, he liked it. Yeah, he liked it. But you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't taking no kind of way or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I understand. Like as an artist, you really just monitoring, monitoring. I guess your brand or um. Or you know what I'm saying, your the aesthetic of your social media, so that's how the head went, really. I have had the chance to interview little Lonnie. Mm. If anybody wants to watch my interviews with him, they can search for his name on this YouTube channel. For so for so for so. And was that ever discussed or talked about? Uh, or even negotiated a price to work with him or collaborate with him of some sort or this is, was just something mentally that you had thought about. It had never gone into fruition past that. Yeah, that's what it was. It was something I had thought about mentally, and I, I never went through with it because back back in them days when he was, you know what I'm saying, when, when, he, was, when he was here doing his thing, like I, I wasn't in a position to where I could afford that type of, that type of collaboration. So uh, I was just working with the means that I had, really. And then back then at that time, um, after I, after high school, really, I don't even think a lot of artists were really seeing me as like a rapper for a period. I took my foot out the gas so long that people was looking at me like, you know, what I'm saying he shoot videos, he taking pictures. So, oh, he he, Brett probably seen me. He probably ain't even know I was rapping for it. So it ain't even matter. <laughs> and just for chronological purposes, can, since we kind of built a timeline here, uh, when did videos? Direct it. When did things of that nature come into place? Was this because we had talked about how you got into the genre of hip hop and R and B and and music? We didn't even bring up the directorial mm. opportunities. So it was music first for you, and then it was directorial music video, whatever uh, shooting, filming after. Mm. Right, right. And but then you go back to the music. Exactly. Exactly. Yup. Yup. Even though, really, I shooting videos and that type of stuff, that's been something I I've been doing all my life. Like you know, what I'm saying a little small stuff. I had to shoot my own videos when I when I first started rapping. I was shooting my own videos on the phone. Like like we really was. You know, what I'm saying low key. I ain't trying to I ain't trying to like you know diss nobody. But we really was low key. Like my clique, we was really like pioneering that type of stuff. Cause when nobody really shooting videos and stuff like that where I'm from in Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi. Like we when they weren't doing that. So yeah, I've been I was already kinda doing it, but once I once I stopped rapping for that little minute, I took I was really shooting videos for other artists. I was really doing it. Then I just got to a point where I'm like, bro, I'm really I don't know, man, I'm I'm really kinda I'm a little bit I'm a little bit more more tighter than a lot of these artists I'm shooting. So let me stop doing that and get back to what I'm supposed to be doing. 
How long do you think that period of your life was when it came to the uh, filming aspect? Uh, uh, like probably a year and a half, probably two years. Really not that long. And what age or what grade were you in at this time? Mm, for I chronological wouldn't. purposes. For so. Uh, Cause you graduated in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, this was like, this was like, like 2017. This was like 2017. So uh, I really probably was like 20, 20, 19, 20 really. So yeah, I wasn't even in school no more at that point. But yeah, it was like 19, 20. So you were half time from 2015 to now. And then in the midst of 2017, 2019, 2020, there was that directorial filming aspect of your life. Right. Mm. In the middle there. Mm. For sure. And uh, what were your thoughts? Oh, first, how'd you hear about little Lonnie's passing? Oh, really, same way most everybody else heard about it, really. Uh, um, either you was on either you was on social media and you seen it, you know, a lot some people was close to the you know what I'm saying, they count they probably they probably heard it another kind of way, but I I speak from how I heard it, like, you know, I was just I was just scrolling one day. I was cool in any uh, regular night, you know what I'm saying? Then I had I was scrolling. And I, I started seeing people tween, you know what I'm saying? Like like art, you know what I'm saying? I hope I hope he pulled through, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Lenny, you gonna pull through all it. I'm like, damn, what they talking about? They gonna... Then they started talking about he got shot. You know what I'm saying? That that happened. And I'm like, damn, 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 damn. This strong, this strong. And, you know what I'm saying? I, 30 minutes, hours, like time just go by. And then you, I just started seeing like RPs. And it was crazy. I was like, damn, that is strong, that's strong. Like, I really... I really didn't there that I really didn't even expect I ain't even see that happening because I was like, damn, like bro, they ain't even had that type of energy on him for real. Like, like it was strong. I was like, bro, they okay. That was strong, man. I couldn't believe it really, cause I was like, damn, like, that shit crazy. But um, I knew I knew people in my city, if they would do that to him, you know what I'm saying? Like they like I was like, bro, they would do that to anybody for real. Cause I couldn't even see that happening for real. When it comes to tactics, method, strategy, what do you think's the single best thing you've done for your career at this point? Um, uh, I say, really just um, just maintaining the quality for real. Um, experiment, uh, trying new stuff, not just sticking to lyrical rap and just 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 making the best out of what I can do. Um, sampling, you know what I'm saying, making my own beats. Um, really just trying just trying new stuff, doing everything that I can do, trying to be the best I can be. Um, just focusing in on my writing and then, you know what I'm saying, trying new stuff, like not even necessarily rapping, I mean writing for every song, just like punching in, freestyling all it, like just trying new stuff. That's the best thing I could have possibly did because it showed me what people like and what they like listening to.